Good afternoon. I'm calling to order the regular meeting of the Parks and Recreation Commission for September 22nd, 2021. Um, Ms. Navarez, may I have roll call, please? Chair McGill. Here. Vice Chair Clark. Here. Commissioner Baker. Commissioner Feck. Here. Commissioner Lesnar Buxton. You. Commissioner Longstreet. Here. Commissioner Perry. And I believe he will be joining us shortly. All right. Um, do we have any changes to the agenda? Uh, Chair McGill, no changes to the agenda. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, written communications? Chair McGill, commissioners, uh, the one written communication unrelated to an item on your agenda was something I sent to you this morning regarding um, the need for public pools as an equity issue in cities. So if you received that, thought you might be interested in seeing that article. It came out in uh, one of the news feeds that I get for local government. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, that was a really interesting article. And I was wondering where it came from because it wasn't a little hard to figure that out. So yeah, thanks for that. Um, that brings us to public comment. Any member of the public may address the commission for up to two minutes on any subject within the jurisdiction of the commission that is not scheduled for a public discussion before the commission. So anything that's not on today's agenda. The total amount of time for public comments will be 15 minutes. So do we have any speak, any raised hands, Ms. Navarez? Um, let me read this blurb. For those who wish to speak during public comment, please use the raise your hand functionality in the GoToWebinar control panel. We are currently displaying a graphic showing where that is located. When I call on you, please unmute yourself and then speak for a maximum of two minutes. And for those who wish to speak on an agenda item later in the meeting, please raise your hand when the item is under discussion. Uh, we have no raised we have we have no raised hands okay great thank you very much all right um that brings us to the youth council report and i've been informed that we do not have a youth council report again this month but we should have one next month um so i will um then move on to the commissioner committee assignment reports and that um, I will start on my right with Commissioner Feck. So, uh, September 18th kicked off Santa Barbara Creek Week. So they had the large coastal cleanup this Saturday, with, or past Saturday, which I participated in. Um, started at Garden Street and kind of did um, all the way up to East Beach. Um, pretty good turnout. A lot of people out there picking up garbage. And um, it was fun to be a part of that um, with different community members. And then the Creeks Commission is actually meeting tonight. Um, at this at the same time, they're doing a tour of uh, Barger Canyon, which I've never been to, but um, they're doing like a site visit today. So, um, anyways, there's some other Creek Week um, activities. So, if anyone wants to know, I think you can check out their website, um, and it's all posted there. Great, thank you. Unfortunately, you're missing Walker Canyon. That's a that's a fun trip, and you don't get to do that that often. Um, <laughs> Commissioner Lesnar Buxton. Um, I would, I really would to go to the youth town who just would with a new day talk about the good thing. Okay, thank you. Um, Commissioner Longstreet. I don't have anything to report this month. Understood. Um, and Vice Chair Clark. I attended the Street Tree Advisory Committee meeting, which we'll talk about all the items on that agenda later in this meeting. And I also um, visited all the trees with Jacob. Um, and that's it for this month. Okay, great, thanks. Um, for myself, we did not have a Park Foundation meeting um, I did attend the site visit with Planning Commission for Ortega Park, and I attended the Planning Commission hearing on Ortega Park and did both written and oral comments. 
and I believe we, that will come up in our director's report. Um, so with that, um, any commission and staff communications to discuss? Uh, Chair Clark, I mean, Chair McGill and commissioners, uh, no additional communications. Right, okay. And um, any um, employee recognition or service awards? And Chair McGill and commissioners, not this month, but stay tuned for next month. Okay, thank you. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> sounds like it's gonna be a big one. Um, right. And then that takes us to the minutes of the um, last meeting and the recommendation that the commission waive the reading and approve the minutes of the regular meeting of August 25th, 2021. I can make a motion to waive the reading of the minutes and approve them as is. Okay, thank you. I can second. Okay, great, thanks. And I see we have Commissioner Perry with us now. Welcome. All right, and we were just getting to the point where we had a motion that was seconded, um, Roger, to approve the minutes from the last meeting. Um, so all in, and so any questions or comments before we move to a vote? All right, um, all in favor? Okay. Aye. Opposed? So moved. I will, I will abstain since I was yeah. not it. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Right. Chair McGill, I did not hear who seconded. Uh, Commissioner Fett seconded. Sorry. Thank you. Sure. I also need to abstain because I didn't hear the motion. Um, we can repeat it. I made a motion to waive the reading of the minutes for the August meeting and approve them. Nice. Okay, great. So we have five yeses and one abstention. So moved. Um, and then now that takes us moving right along to the street tree advisory items. And if we could turn it over to Mr. Slack, we will start with Allen Road. Good afternoon, Chair McGill and commissioners. The first <clears throat> street tree advisory committee recommendation for review is the request to remove a sweet gum street tree located within the public right of way at 554 Allen Road. Uh, some quick background, some of the members will remember that we did review this item last month. Um, there was a motion to deny the request. It did not move forward and was postponed to allow for site visits to take place. And so we're revisiting it again today. Uh, the applicants unable to be present. Um, they did provide some written correspondence, which we've put in the circulation as well. The applicants are requesting the removal of the tree due to a few reasons, uh, sidewalk disruption. They're also identifying the tree as a hazard. Um, with concern for limb failure and also litter and debris accumulation in the yard and on the sidewalk. There were a couple questions I think that are worth uh, <clears throat> providing some additional clarification to. We talked about the sidewalk that linked last meeting. Um, the sidewalk on Allen Road is quite unique in that it abruptly stops at the end of the street on both sides of the property. So there's really no defined immediate like access ramps to access the end of Allen Road there. The sidewalk just abruptly steps, stops. That was a question that came up and we weren't able to provide clarification on. So I'm sure you saw that during the site visit as well. Just to recap the Street Tree Advisory Committee's review, they noted the tree was in great health, well-maintained. Uh, debris, as we've talked about many times, is typically not a valid criteria for removal. The municipal code also does require the adjacent property owner to provide reasonable maintenance of both the parkway and the sidewalk, and that includes keeping the sidewalk reasonably clear of debris. Um, and <clears throat> the committee during discussion, they did discuss the sidewalk, which we often do when we're reviewing street tree removal requests. 
and it was determined that the sidewalk, while disrupted in a few places, was repairable without causing detrimental damage to the tree. And they did ultimately recommend that the commission deny the request for the removal of the street tree at 554 Allen Road. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Slack? I was wondering if Mr. Slack could address, we received a letter this week from the applicants and one of the questions, I'll just paraphrasing it was, how does not removing this tree and replacing it with a younger tree, how does that not meet um, our goals for the urban forest? And I'm asking on behalf of the applicants, just I, I understand. Um, but I think it needs clarified for others. And I've got the exact language here if, if anybody needs it. Yeah. Chair McGill and Commissioner Clark, I think, you know, when you look at sort of the, the overall goal of the urban forestry program, it's to, you know, maintain, preserve, protect, you know, city infrastructure, street trees, park trees. So, when we're looking, when we have these, we have these situations all around town where we have trees and, and disruption to maybe curb and gutter, or sidewalk, or both of those things. It's always been the department's approach to try to preserve the tree if it's within reason. And while the applicant brings up a very good point about looking at the sort of the cost benefit analysis of maybe taking action on the tree in its present state rather than, you know, looking further down the road, a missing component of that and like a driving very like important component of our program's goal is that trees increase in their value as they age. So ecosystem service benefits in the way of like carbon sequestration, stormwater interception, the removal of addition, additional like harmful atmospheric pollutants like nitrous oxide and sulfur and all of these things that you know, have like negative impacts from a public health perspective, uh, the tree does more and more work as it gets larger. And so our goal is to try to preserve and promote the use and the retention of large canopy shade trees within reason. So we have a very functional relationship with the streets department. We're often having to make repairs to sidewalks. I think there's general agreement on a citywide level and cross departmentally that these large canopy shade trees, the benefits that they provide far outweigh, you know, the, the, the potential and the, the need to make repairs on given basis, depending on the situation. So it's not uncommon, even in sit specific situations of trees of significant merit, where we've had to repair the sidewalk on multiple occasions through root pruning or some other techniques like bridging or other alternatives that allow for repair of the hardscape while still retaining the tree. Thank you. Um, Chair McGill and Commissioner uh, Clark, just also since I spearheaded the development of the city's urban forest management plan, and it went through an extensive review process with a very involved advisory committee from all boards and commissions are, I mean, not all boards and commissions, but HLC, ABR, Parks and Recreation, Street Tree Advisory. The concept behind the infrastructure is really focused on where, and, and you can go anywhere in downtown Santa Barbara where we have power lines and trees that have been Mickey Moused by, um, by Southern California Edison in order to provide clearance of the lines. And the focus there is over time, finding ways to cycle out trees that are too large for overhead infrastructure conflict. And then also, you know, other examples would be the ficus trees on Upper State Street and the ficus trees on Milpas Street. And in those cases, we have very detailed, very long-term phased um, approaches to restoring the canopy in a different way. But it all has to do with a much larger vision for what happens in that area of the city rather than one-offs throughout the city. 
Thank you. That is helpful. Um, before I ask a couple questions, does anybody else on the commission have some questions for Mr. Slack? Okay, so my questions, um, and then I'll see if we do have any speakers from the public. Um, I did have one quick question. Um, sure. Go ahead. From one of, the, one of the things we sought to answer by postponing the decision and revisiting the area was to determine whether or not the sidewalk on the opposite side of the street was in good repair and provided access for people heading towards the open space. And I was wondering if Mr. Slack had a chance to go back as I'm assuming most of us did to look at the sidewalk on the other side of the street and what he thought of that. Chair McGill and Commissioner Clark, <clears throat> I think if you, again, if you had the opportunity to visit the site, there's areas all throughout Allen Road of, of varying levels of maybe disruption, partial repair, complete repair, and then some instances where the sidewalk's not been, there's been no need to make any repair. The, I think when you look at Allen Road in full context, they're starting right as you exit Cliff Drive, there's really large evergreen ash trees um, for a while. And then for some unknown reason, I don't have the history behind it, all of the really old mature shade trees are still kind of on that side of Allen Road. So I think it's pretty safe to say that the sidewalk's in better condition on the other side of Allen Road. And then in the immediate vicinity, uh, as you get closer towards the end of Allen Road, where it um, segues into the Arroyo Borough open space is in much better shape um, than parts of Allen Road, much closer back towards Cliff Drive. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Longstreet. I would say that um, on the opposite of the tree on that sidewalk, there has been some repairs made. They've been grounded that side of the street. Um, the sidewalk is fairly level. Um, on the side with the tree in question, the raising of that sidewalk to me was less than an inch and yeah. could easily be handled with bridging or grinding. Yeah, but that's what, that was my, both of those observations matched my own and, and the photos that I took. Um, I guess my questions, they reference branches falling and then, and we've seen this before, um, referenced sweet gums being inappropriate for an urban setting. Uh, and I think I'm paraphrasing there. Um, Mr. Slack, could you speak to both of those, please? Chair McGill and commissioners, I think that we've learned lots of lessons about trees. You know, um, Ms. Zachary alluded to the uh, large ficus on Upper State Street in Milpas, and I think, you know, you could easily say that maybe that wasn't the best selection at the time. Um, they've been remarkably um, successful at growing and getting really large and doing sort of all the environmental work that we talked about. I think there's some, certainly some rationale um, to say that sweet gum sort of falls into that same criteria. It's, a, it's long been planted in Southern California. Um, hardscape damage is, is something that is somewhat common with this species and, and documented as the applicant said. Um, we have 460 uh, sweet gums remaining in the city street inventory. I think that uh, we learn as we experience and, and see these trees and work with these trees. And I think that certainly in some situations, sweet gum might not be appropriate for a certain size parkway moving forward, making informed progressive planning decisions. In the near future, we'll be coming and talking about how street tree designations are made and some of the decisions that go into making those uh, designations. And I think in this situation, the existing designation of Chinese pistache was made uh, by looking at Allen Road in full context, seeing the, the challenges, especially that the evergreen ash further up on Allen Road near Cliff Drive have um, caused, the, they've caused some challenges up there. Kind of, um, and we've made like a 
progressive decision to sort of not plant sweet gum on Allen Road, right? But that does not mean that we shouldn't preserve large, healthy, mature canopy trees when we have the ability to do so. So I think moving forward as we evaluate street tree designations and we, we can go back and look at things and we can actually see the performance of these species and what where they function well, where they might be a little limited in terms of available rooting volume, we, we try to make the best, most long-term sustainable decision that we can to try to prevent, you know, consistent infrastructure damage. So I think there's some, certainly some rationale for evaluating where sweet gum makes sense and where it doesn't make sense, but that I don't think precludes us from part of our core mission of preserving large canopy shade trees when we can. And just to provide a little clarification, we've been in contact. Uh, we reported the disruption at Allen Road pre-meeting, pre-street pre tree advisory committee meeting, and it will be it will be repaired um, probably within that next couple months. They will be patching it until they until there are like long-term um, large-scale infrastructure repair, like we're seeing all around town as part of especially with the Measure C funding coming in where we're seeing wholesale replacement and repair of both roadways, curb and gutter and sidewalks. So it will be patched in the immediate future, which will alleviate a uh, temporary basis of disruption until such time where it can be fully repaired. Um, I forget the second part of your question, Chair McGill. It was branches. Um, does this have a special proclivity for dropping branches? Uh, Chair McGill and commissioners, I would say not on a high level. I think this tree, when we look at an individual specific application, it's not been problematic. It's very well maintained. There's nothing glaring about it. Sweet gum has a really good natural architecture and, and if reasonably maintained, it's certainly not a problematic species in terms of, you know, large limb failure. Okay, thank you. Um, with that, I think this is a good opportunity to um, see if there are any members of the public that wish to speak on this agenda item. Ms. Navarez, do we have any raised hands? Uh, Chair Clark, no there. Oh, excuse me, Chair McGill. <clears throat> no, there are no raised hands. <laughs> we do look alike, don't we, Nicole? <laughs> um, okay, so with that, I think, um, I'm prepared to make a motion, but I think it's good to have an opportunity for some discussion here. Um, when we talked about this tree last time, one, when I listen and, and play back the commentary from the commission, one of the real drivers here was the concern over access, particularly ADA access. And, and, and um, Director Zachary has already brought this up, but I think it's really worth highlighting that in terms of a decision for this tree, from what I saw and has been reported, um, there's two things. The sidewalk immediately opposite is in actually quite good shape, but the, but the real issue is that this tree has nothing to do with, ac with access because you have to if you you have to get off the sidewalk if you're in a chair wheelchair you have to get off the sidewalk before you get to this tree on a driveway apron because there, there is no ramp beyond this tree it is solid curb all the way around so while that does present an access issue it is not an access issue that is caused by this tree um and i think that's that's a is an important point um then I think we've talked about um, quite at length the question that the um, applicants asked about how keeping this tree um, furthers our mission. And, and, and really, I would flip that question around and say, how does removing a healthy, mature tree further our mission? Um, and I think that's, that's important and a driver for me and, and I think actually has been addressed at length that I don't need to repeat it. Um, Chair McGill? Yes, who, who are we? I was, it's BB. Um, I, I would just like to say I reviewed um, 
the tape prior to making a site visit to the area. And I agree with what you said. Um, for this tree to have any impact on ADA accessibility, it would entail an entire ADA project. The, um, it does not at this point. Um, there's nothing about the sidewalk that will become better. It's not wide enough. There's no curb cuts. Um, it, you know, that seems to me a, the removal of that tree is not furthering any ADA accessibility. Um, so, you know, but I did want to make it clear. I reviewed the discussion the commission had last month. Great, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I do seeing the tree. I have to see Congress Commissioner Major and John Street. I don't think he will have any impact on access if it cuts down. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Commissioner Lester Buxton. Do we have any additional comments or discussion or questions? I am willing to entertain a motion or make it myself. Um, I would make a motion to concur with the street tree advisory recommendation to deny removal of the um, liquid amber styro, what, the sweet gum. Um, okay at 554 Allen Road. I'll second. Okay, great. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so moved. Um, Ms. Navarez, I believe this is appealable. I need to have that language if you've got it handy. I Do I have it handy? It's usually on the orange part of our agenda. It says any action. Any action. Chair McGill, it's at the top of your agenda. You don't have to read it. And I think we could do that Sorry, as that, the street tree items. It's at the top of the street tree items? Committee it's items. And we could do that after the commission's considered all of the, the tree removal requests as well. Okay. I'm not seeing it, but that's probably probably um oh here we are okay so any actions of the park and recreation commission made pursuant to santa barbara municipal Co code chapter 1520 tree planting and maintenance or or chapter 1524 preservation of trees may be appealed to the city council within 10 days pursuant to provisions of section 130.050 of the municipal code i'll get that better with time Okay, and I guess before we move on, um, I do want to, you know, highlight once again how important the site visits are. I mean, I think that really became clear last last time when um, effectively we did not have complete information for making the decision, and and not enough of us had been there to really understand that. Um, and it's. Um, yeah, I mean, personally, I think it's uh, Director Zachary told me when I when I joined that it was an important part of the job, and I think this really highlights it. It's it's kind of the the applicants. It's it's better for the applicants if everybody's really aware of what's going on, and it's and it's better for the trees and the urban forest. So, I'll stop there. Thank thank you. And we can move on to two eleven Oliver Road. Chair McGill and commissioners, the next Street Tree Advisory Committee recommendation for review is a request to remove a, a Maya Porum located within the front setback of the property at 211 Oliver Road. <clears throat> the applicant's requesting the removal of the tree for a couple different reasons. Uh, there's The tree is really close to the gas meter um, that was listed on the application. Uh, the tree's being affected by an insect and the biggest reason is that it's pressing against what is a, an existing really large uh, Monterey Cypress on the property. 
Um, the committee reviewed the request, uh, did note that the tree was in pretty close proximity to the gas line, uh, the, noted the presence of the pest, it's a thrips is what the uh, insect is called. It's primarily cosmetic in nature. Um, it can be detrimental in the long term. Uh, and did note that the cypress that are existing within the front setback were in great shape, provided significant value to the property and the immediate neighborhood, and that the myoporum stem pressing against the cypress trunk provided really very little value. Um, the, after review, the committee made a recommendation to approve the removal of the myoporum. Uh, there was no condition for replant. Uh, they they noted that the existing Monterey cypress, there were several uh, within the front setback on the property, again, quite large, very well established, and the applicant had recently planted a jacaranda uh, also within the front setback that you can't see in this photo. It would be just to the right of the photo as well, so there was no condition. Um, during that review, they made the determination the commission could make the finding that principles of good forest management will be best served by the proposed removal. Okay, do we have any questions for Mr. Slack? Now, I have one, but it's more almost a curiosity question. The trunk being that close to the healthy trees is removal is there, um, is there any risk to the existing healthy trees in removing this tree? Chair McGill and commissioners, we did not get into great detail during review at the committee level. I think everybody was, the general consensus without discussing it was that it would just be cut as, as low to the ground as possible and, and stump grinding is probably not advisable just given how close the, uh, the stem is to the uh, the existing Monterey Cypress trunk. Any additional questions? Okay, uh, if not, I will um, ask if there are any members of the public that wish to speak on this agenda item. Ms. Navarez? Chair McGill, there are no hands raised. Okay. Um, any discussion? All right, well, if not, um, I'm prepared to make a motion that we approve the setback removal request at 211 Oliver Road for the myoporum um, with no condition of replanting on the um, on the finding that the principles of good forest management will be best served by the proposed removal. I'll second. All right. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Great. So moved. And that takes us to our final at Cali Lorellis. Chair McGill and Commissioners, the last Street Tree Advisory Committee recommendation for review is the request to remove a, a Tipawana Tipu tree located within the front setback of the property at 30 East Calle Lorelez. The applicant was requesting removal due to spatial considerations, stating that the tree's outgrown uh, its reasonable planting space in the front of the property. They cited uh, previous limb failures and also disruption to the brick walkway um, that's located uh, in front of the property there. The committee reviewed the tree uh, during discussion, noted it was in really good health, a fine specimen for Tipuana Tipu. Um, also noted that that particular block of Calle Lorelez, especially as you're approaching uh, Peabody School from State Street was particularly devoid of large canopy trees. And this tree provided pretty significant visual impact to the neighborhood in terms of community benefit. Uh, the consensus with the tipu in relation to limb failure and maintenance was that through routine maintenance, the canopy can be managed and uh, probability of limb failure dramatically reduced. Overall, they felt that the uh, 
removal of the tree would be a material impact to the community as a whole and specifically this small section of Calle Loreles. And then in addition to that, as similar to other reviews, the disruption to the brick walkway was determined to be easily repairable without the need to remove the existing tree. And after review, the committee made a recommendation to deny the request to remove the, the Tipawana Tipu at 30 East Calle Loreles. Sorry, I was muted. Vice Chair Clark. Um, Mr. Slack, I was wondering, do you have a, another photo that shows that tree and also the house immediately to the right with the canopy in front and back? Because um, when Jacob and I went out and made a site visit, I spoke to the neighbor next door facing the house to the right and he told me that he, there's a, a beautiful canopy tree right in the back of the house next door. He said he's planning on taking that down. And there is a small, well, a medium sized pine tree in front that he's also planning on taking down in the near future. So I think it would be helpful to look in context at the two houses side by side and see the drastic change that's gonna happen if all three of those trees are removed in a relatively small amount of time. Vice Chair Clark, are you talking about the tree that you can just barely see at the right side of the photo with the red pickup truck in front of it? That is correct. Yeah. That does look like a large tree. Sometimes Nathan can fly in there on Google um, magic. But... Uh, Chair McGill and Commissioner Clark, we don't have any uh, preloaded photos. I, I don't know that we can do it quickly enough to, to do a Google Street View. Somebody would have to make me an organizer in order to be able to do that. Um, I have a photo on my phone I could hold up to the... So if can, if can Ms. Navarez can make me an um, organizer, I can probably There's a... do it real quick. That Cabo? I will, okay, sorry. I am showing uh, Excellent. Yeah, maps. Here we go. So it's the canopy tree, um, Vice Chair Clark, it's the canopy tree behind the garage on the brown house to the this right. One? Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And then in front of the brown house, there's, you can't quite see it. It's just. Uh, yep. Yeah that one yeah so it's that large tree in the back yes correct yeah okay shall I take it back to the PowerPoint or do you still I want to look we, at this yeah thank okay. you mm -hmm. So um, are there any additional questions? I was going to ask about um, brittle branches and overhanging branches. I think um, Mr. Slack's already addressed that. Unless you have anything else you want to add. Chair, Chair McGill and Commissioners, I, you know, Tipu is a pretty aggressively growing tree. So it does require, I think, maybe more frequent maintenance than some other large canopy shade trees, but it also responds really well to pruning and can be maintained. And again, the, the incidence and probability of limb failure can be significantly reduced through routine uh, frequent maintenance uh, throughout the tree's canopy. Okay, thank you. Um, Unless there are any additional questions at this time, I will open it up to the public to see if there's anybody that wishes to speak on this agenda item. Ms. Navarez, do we have any raised hands? Chair McGill, no, no hands are raised. Okay. Um, do we have any further discussion on this item? Uh, yes. Um, is the neighbor's tree in the front 
within the setback rules. And then really a question is, can we have influence over a neighbor's future plans as we address this tree that's been uh, applied for? Chair McGill and Commissioner Perry. <clears throat> Santa Barbara Municipal Code 15.24, which regulates trees within the setback, defines a, a regulated tree as a tree that has a diameter measured at four and a half feet above grade. It has to be larger than four inches. So I think the answer to your question would be, it's always our hope that before anybody does anything in a front yard pertaining to a tree, they reach out to us in advance. We probably would take a, take a drive out there, put a diameter tape on it, measure it to see what the actual uh, diameter is, and that would determine whether or not it was regulated. If it's larger than four inches in diameter, when measured at four and a half feet above grade, it's a regulated tree as per municipal code 15.24. If it's smaller than that, it's, it does not require a permit to remove. So it's not distance from the curb, has no impact on it. Uh, Chair McGill and Commissioner Perry, it does um, depending upon what the property is zoned. So setbacks are defined based on whatever the property is zoned. And it can, be as little, it can be as little as zero feet and as much as 35, depending on the zoning. Those are things that we like, to, we sort out as part of the application process. So anytime that we're contacted by a resident or we get a tree removal application before we've had the chance to talk to them, we have to look up what the property is zoned and whether or not the tree is gonna fall within the setback. Looking at it, I'm making a speculative guess that it is likely within the front setback of this property. And just for absolute clarity, the tree in the back is not regulated, correct? Chair McGill and commissioners, that would be correct. Okay. Is there any further discussion? I would add, I drive this street frequently. And, and frankly, this is one of a number of trees that really dwarfs the neighborhood and almost obscures the housing. I don't, I, I find the request to be very reasonable. Okay. Be honest, I lived on that street for years and my kids went to Peabody and it was always kind of a relief to go buy some canopy. Yeah, that's a tough one, isn't it? I mean, I mean you know, it's, there's valid discussion around when does a tree become too big for the, for the house that it supports. Um, and yet the trees provide all the valuable work that um, Mr. Slack so ably discussed in the Allen Road um, application. It's a beautiful tree. It really is. Um, I'm prepared to make a motion. Okay. I would move that we concur with the Street Tree Advisory Committee recommendation to deny the removal of the Tipuana Tipu at 30 East Calle Morales. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Opposed. Okay. All right. It's so moved with five ayes and one nay. And um, Rose, it was Roger that, that opposed. Yes, thank you. Thank you. All right. I think that finishes the trees and takes us to our director's report. Director Zachary. Chair McGill and commissioners, a um, couple of things to report to you today. Number one, we finally, after much delay, were able to reopen most of Bonnet Park. Uh, that renovation project uh, went on for many more months than anticipated due to a variety of reasons and is still not yet complete. 
So we're working on uh, finding a way to ensure that the rest of the projects complete. Given that the neighborhood uh, suffered not having this park um, during the height of even the winter COVID and then the resurgence, we really felt it was important to provide access. So on September 3rd, um, we reopened the play spaces with the exception of the basketball court because it needs to be um, resurfaced and um, the entry ramp does not provide access, but kids and families and adults could use the turf, could enjoy the picnic areas, including the new uh, picnic area, which is located um, in the section of the park that used to have a staircase that was not accessible uh, and also falling apart. And then also we ensured that the playground was clean and ready to play on and put in new picnic tables and other amenities. Um, due to the condition of the park, when we tried to reopen it, it required an extraordinary amount of effort on the part of parks and recreation department staff, uh, including our, our parks division folks, our creeks division folks, project management folks. And then I'd also like to acknowledge that we've been working really closely with the public works department, both engineering and had support from facilities to get it open. Um, so I encourage you to go check it out. And um, if, if that's a place you'd like to do a site visit, we'd be happy to do that with you. I would add that prior to the sort of park and creek related uh, work that was done there, we did renovate the restroom. So the interior of our restroom is much improved and uh, is also now finally ready for the public to use. And then the Thousand Steps Repair Project. Uh, I say this to folks, uh, what it does more than anything is date me. And I think Commissioner Longstreet um, knows the long, the long history of this project. When I became the assistant director, oh, back in 2007, this project was on our capital program and it had a $60,000 little line item to evaluate what we could do to steps to make them safe. Uh, through the years, it got unfunded, refunded, unfunded, refunded. Uh, luckily, the funding that we have for the project right now is a result of the Refugio oil spill. So it was mitigation dollars that were applied for this project. Uh, getting the Coastal Commission approval for the project uh, took uh, more time than we anticipated. However, we were on the uh, agenda for the hearing on September 8th and the Coastal Development Permit was approved, which is wonderful. Uh, what this project will do is it will... Uh, reconstruct the lowest 24 steps. Those are the ones that suffer the most from the water intrusion and the mold and also are eroding. We're also gonna add 10 steps. And that was part of the complication with getting through the Coastal Commission because we're actually putting more concrete on the beach. But that what that will achieve is it allow people to go to the beach via a thousand steps in March when the sand levels are extraordinarily low and they won't have to jump three feet down to get to the beach. They'll actually be able to safely get to the beach there. We'll also have a handrail that's installed the full length of thousand steps. The other, other consideration for this project is it is considered a historic structure, even though it hasn't received any official city designation. It's constructed in 1925. So we had a historic landmarks commission consideration. And if you uh, are familiar with, and I, and I think we did a visit there, and I think Commissioner Lesnar Bugson told me afterwards that he did actually uh, travel down a portion of it. There is a landing area and we will be uh, putting in a new balcony there. So there won't be the sort of old metal railing that sort of prevented people from going over the edge. Uh, we need to get final HLC approval, uh, get our public works building permit, put it out to bid, and hopefully we will get this project complete in February, March of next year. And that will be uh, a wonderful achievement after so long. And then Park Ortega Park, our revitalization of that park. We were on the planning commission agenda for September 16th. I wanna thank and acknowledge both Chair McGill and Commissioner Longstreet for speaking on behalf of the commission in support of the project uh, after I, I believe about four hours. And uh, I wasn't in town, but I was I was participating via Wi-Fi, very spotty Wi-Fi, I might add. Uh, Parks, uh, uh, Justin Van Mullen and Rich Hanna basically carried it for, for the department and did a fantastic job presenting and answering questions. 
and ultimately uh, we received unanimous approval of the project as well as CEQA certification. What this means more than anything is it allows us to move forward with the next phase of final design, development and construction documents. It also fully completes our grant application to the State Parks um, Department for the Prop 68 funds. So at uh, 824 yesterday evening, I uploaded our notice of determination and communicating with our grant manager. So we still have our fingers crossed that we made it to the finish line in time to be considered for the grant funding. And hopefully we'll learn sooner rather than later because that will give us even more impetus to keep moving forward as well as secure additional funds uh, because we've had a lot of input on why we're not also including the pool. We would very much like to build the pool as soon as possible too. So that'll be another initiative that we try to get underway while we continue uh, the design work for the park. And that concludes my remarks. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Great, thank you. Um, does anybody have any questions for Director Zachary? Um, I don't have a question. I just wanna say congratulations to um, you and all the staff for all of three of these projects are most important to the community and none of them have been easy, but they will be appreciated. So thank you. Yeah, yes. I will definitely second that. And really um, a real shout out to, to Justin and Rich on how they handled that planning commission meet, meeting. That was that was quite a marathon and they really, um, they were obviously extremely well prepared and very articulate and just did a great job um, supporting the park revitalization. So, you know, they, they uh, as, as well as the planning department staff themselves. Um, it was it was quite a session and I'm really pleased with the outcome. Um, it's great to read a report like this with with three big milestones achieved. Um, I have you know there's lots of questions about Ortega Park and the pool and the grant and this but I, I know it's not an agenda item. so perhaps perhaps we should, table that as an agenda item, I would say as soon as we know about the grant would be a good time to do it. Chair McGill and Commissioner, certainly we'd be happy to come back to you um, as we move forward and hopefully within the context of having secured the grant funds. I would add that uh, it would be the staff recommendation that even if we don't receive this grant that we continue moving forward with final design and construction documents because it enables us to be that much more ready if another funding source becomes available and continues it. I would also add that part of our conditions of approval, and there are a number of them, we will be moving forward with murals stakeholders to develop the murals implementation plan. And that is something that will be a priority um, it, starting in the next month or so as well. Great. Well, if there are no other questions or comments for Director Zachary, I think that I takes have one. Oh, I'm sorry. I have one. I, um, in the next couple of months, um, could we get an update on how the rentals are going? I've noticed, you know, that everything's picking up and we're seeing weddings on the beach and all of that. And, and I'm not talking about a huge, you know, report, but just how are the bookings looking, um, the Cabrillo Arts Center? What's just what's happening in our venues? Certainly, um, Chair McGill and Commissioner Longstreet, commissioners, we can we can do that. I, I, I think we're hopeful that we may have gotten through this latest spike um, and we'll be moving forward, but we are seeing continued interest, slow, continued interest in, in reserving our facilities for events. Great, good. All right, and unless there's nothing else, that takes us to old business. Do we have any old business? Chair McGill, no, we have no old business. The commission can enjoy a short meeting. Yes. A little bit of sunlight at the end of the day, and uh, we look forward to seeing you next month. And, and I, I will send out an email regarding 
options for site visits and we'll try to get some some feedback on your availability yeah that would be great i think that's a uh, be a very good way for us to connect and there's certainly a number of places where we have activity that would be interesting to see, to visit um new business i'm not aware of any okay and with no new business, I will hereby adjourn the meeting. And thank you very much. And we'll see you all next month.